So this will be a little bit of a different teardown than normal. I have this Leader brand uh, function generator, model LFG1300S. And I was hoping to use it on my bench, but this one is bad. But I also got two of them, so the other one's good. So it's kind of good and bad. <laughs> but there's something wrong with the, um, I guess, multiplier knob. And depending on where you turn it, it doesn't work. It seems mostly okay with the 1x multiplier, but it just kind of depends on how temperamental it wants to be. So, since it doesn't work correctly, I thought it'd be fun to make a video looking inside. Hopefully there's nothing naughty on the inside, considering I've just powered it on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't get shocked. We'll find out. It's part of the adventure, I suppose. But, yeah, just something finicky about this multiplier knob. I don't know if it's like a variable capacitor and it's dirty or what this is specifically, but it's unfortunate. But I'm gonna clean off my table and then uh, we'll take a look inside. All right, got the top down view going now. And I'm gonna pop the cover off. Unfortunately, the other problem with this unit is the feet, the rubber feet are starting to turn back into goo. But that's easily fixable with the right motivation. Just gotta kinda clean it up. I'm not sure what kind of environment this was used in, so I'm wondering if maybe there's some corrosion internally or something that'll be, will be seen once the cover is taken off. It is kind of weird because there's this plastic layer that's peeling off of the housing. And I'm inclined to believe it's the original, like, protective coating that came from the factory, like the peel, as people like to call it. But at the same time, I'm not sure. <laughs> so I'm just kind of leaving that alone, as tempting as it is to peel it off. These are nice long screws I used. Alright, so I think the top cover should be free now. Yep. Oh wow, that's a lot simpler inside than I was expecting. Ooh. And the multiplier knob might be a variable resistor, not a capacitor. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a variable resistor. I looked in the um, service manual I found online and I thought maybe it was a variable capacitor, but I might have misinterpreted the list of uh, parts that was included. That's funny. So the uh, power switch is switching line voltage. I believe... No, maybe not. Um... Oh, yeah. No, I'm correct. It's switching line voltage. It's kind of amusing that they decided to go with this long metal shaft instead of just putting the switch in the front. It's a very nice looking board. Everything's just so neatly laid out. And there's even some internal test points, which I'm sure the uh, documentation will probably explain. But very clean on the inside. Very nicely Nicely built. I suppose it makes sense, being that it's, you know, a piece of test equipment and all, but... Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It should be fairly straightforward to repair, if, uh... If I'm lucky. Just gonna get the focus. Kinda do some panning around here. For some reason I have a secondary board up top for... Looks like a couple knobs and switches. Otherwise, uh, all the other pots are mounted to the front plate. Don't 
a variety of adjustments. This one's offset, that one's labeled offset. Kind of hard to read those through the screen. It all seem to be fairly standard parts too, so the list when I looked at the service manual didn't seem too intimidating at least. Some of the tolerances on the resistors and stuff kind of surprised me, but I'm not an electronics design expert by any means, so I just wasn't expecting to see a 25% variance allowed. <laughs> I'm going to zoom out, show the back of the unit. Looks like there is a uh, optional accessory port here possibly. I'm not sure what the story is with that. I will uh, probably try to fix this. I don't know yet. I don't really need two of them. The original intent was to uh, buy these since they were sold in a pair and then uh, keep whichever one I like better and then sell the other one. Since they're mostly identical there really was no I guess difference to justify keeping whichever one I liked better but um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> also, I'll see if I can get a good zoom in on that pot. I don't think that's going to be all. Looks like I'm just looking through the camera. The brand name is Ometer. I'm just going to pull it out of frame here and look at my own eyes. Oh, it just says, it's says potentiometer. <laughs> um, I assume this is pronounced sake, S-A-K-A-E, Japan. Um, date code on, it's 9403, so I assume that would be the third week of 1994. And it's rated for one kilo ohm. So, I'm not quite sure how hard that's going to be to clean. It depends on how sealed it is, since it has that nice metal can around it. But, hopefully this is something I can revive. The other one I have works fairly well. It seems to be in spec. It's not calibrated by any means, but using the oscilloscope and some basic math, the uh, frequencies were close enough. They were close enough to what I was expecting. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.